Hello, my beautiful Virgos, and welcome to your horoscope for May 2020. And Virgo, every month I feel like I get a sign that is just like very straight to the point as far as the astrology goes. And sometimes it's down in Aquarius, sometimes it's over here, and I feel like it is just that cut and dry to the point for you this month. There is so much happening in your 10th house this month. The area of career and who you are in the world is absolutely lit up this month, which is interesting because this is a timing in this particular month where it's like, yes, you've got family things happening for sure, but you are also got this height of career energy happening. So there's a lot that is just shifting, but in a way that is actually very balanced. Not to mention this month, we've got 40% of our planets that are going to be in retrograde activity. So the world is having a slowdown, but as it's slowing down, Virgo, getting your name out there, sharing your story, sharing who you are and what you're about, this is an energy for you that is very well expanded. And because we're going to see so much energy happening in Gemini, I really think that this is a month where you've got a lot of talking or communication, or you're just sharing information going on. And this is the element in the area of success. Now, Gemini is a fellow Mercury ruled energy, but I think you're communicating in an actual way that is like about details. You're sharing the details of who you are, and that is somehow leading you to this next level of success, not just in career, but in the soul level calling. Because the 10th house is not just career. It is also about who you are in the world. Are you married? And then you get divorced are you divorced and you get married do you have children you know whatever it is when it changes who you are in public this is also going to bring a new vibration and a new energy right in around you so this is definitely a month where I feel like not only is there a fair amount of spiritual energy happening around you but it is beautifully busy in this career and out in public kind of zone Okay, Virgo, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. So right at the beginning of the month, we see a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio, and this is going to light up your third house. So again, we've got more communication just immediately in the beginning of the month, right? Now, the third house is communication. It's teaching. It's learning. It's how your perception is of things. This is certainly um, an energy of siblings and neighbors maybe having a connection there. In the third house, we also do things like write, write blogs, write books, do the details of websites, documents, paper, any of that kind of stuff happens in this area. But it is a very informational and message kind of sector. Now the full moon brings the activity in. It says, okay, Virgo, something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make a shift here or a shift is happening. And how we're going to do that is in Scorpio quality. So we're going to become aware that this shift needs to take place in the area of our deepest desires, right? Or where we're struggling to fulfill those deep desires that we have in this area. Scorpio wants us to get to the depth of information. Now, I also always think of Scorpio in the energy of the reproductive system, just in the body in general. And the moon is so highly emotional that truly, if you've got things going on in your sex life, your reproductive life, you can see that this full moon is bringing shift to that as well. So you can see some changes happening in your body as well. Um, and when changes are happening in your body, whether it's hormonal, if you're pregnant, if you're working out, you're, you're shedding weight or you're gaining weight, there has to be this scorpionic kind of principle where you have to die off in one way so that you can live in another for sure. So just keep that in mind as this third house area comes, because it could also be bringing you, um, an energy where it's like, my even my physical body or how I perceive the world is not communicated third house the same way anymore okay on the 11th we have a busy day we've got mercury moving into the energy of gemini so he's coming home into a fellow um mercury ruled energy so he's very comfortable in domicile this is the tip top of your chart whenever something is happening at the tip top of the chart we know that we need to pay attention because there is progress being made here mercury is making you a better communicator in this area and in the 10th house you could actually be communicating in public whether it's for work whether it is for pleasure whatever it is you're being seen and you're communicating in 
public for sure or you're studying or you're learning or there's a perception about you in public in some way shape or form now at the same time we've got saturn moving into its retrograde now saturn is going to begin the retrograde at one degree of aquarius so over here in your sixth house so health um, the body service your daily routines work all of those kinds of things you've just started to get a new social awareness and innovative awareness of this area of your life and then it's going to end that retrograde at 20 five degrees of Capricorn so going back over this fifth house zone the home of children the home of conception whether that be the conception of children or the conception of a new business idea an area of romance and play and desire and passion and we take risks in this area now you have spent the last two and a half, three years with Saturn over here creating a solid foundation for you in this particular area. So as Saturn is retrograde here, he's saying, okay, I'm almost done with this area, Virgo, but I need to make sure it is tip top, right? Like ship shape over here. You've learned these lessons. We've been able to make something crystallized so that you can stand on this next level of maturity as a solid foundation as you go forward. So as Saturn is retrograde, you're going to get more serious about this area of your life for the future and what still needs a little bit more of adjustment now again in the energy of Capricorn that's stuff you've already been looking at so I won't be surprised when we get to the July time frame and you start to see a lot more of the things you've already been working on making an adjustment uh, the first part you may be a little bit of surprised of, of some things that come up especially in the sixth house do you need some changes to your health do you need to get serious about this area do you need to make changes to your daily work routine and how you're handling that so just just be mindful of these changes and we'll begin to start to feel that slow down at this point in the month as well. On the 13th, also a very busy day, Mars is moving into the energy of Pisces. And then we've also got Venus stepping into her retrograde. Now, Mars in the energy of Pisces for you is going to light up the street just across the sign, just across the street. So it's going to be in your seventh house. So this is the house of partnerships, conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships. When Mars is in Pisces, it's like, what do I want here? Because Mars is also desire, right? So you're like, ah, I don't know. I'm not really willing to push too hard for it. Let's, let's trust the intuition let's let things pan out as they will but Mars in the seventh house also gives me this idea especially with so much happening in your tenth house up there that maybe some of the things that are happening is you are entering into spiritual relationships or you're taking action in maybe you're speaking for a charity or you're going to your you're reading books online for children who are of a special population there's something that's a very like charitable spiritual creative kind of action I think that you're taking in relationships that also translates to maybe something that you're doing in public or out in the world so this is a wonderful energy here um to let intuition and to let this space, spirituality in between the worlds, the fantasy, the idealism kind of guide you as well. Now with Mars and Pisces, the only other thing that I will tell you is if you're feeling restless in your relationships, make sure you're doing something to move your body, to move your creativity so that Mars is not rattling you into crazy, okay? Venus is going to take this retrograde and as she begins, she's going to begin it at 21 degrees of Gemini and then she'll end it June 5th. Uh, 25th at five degrees of Gemini so solidly over here in the 10th house so again Venus retrograde is first off asking us to go back we're going back to something and we're going back to something that is affectionate something that's had value relationships in our lives we're going back to financial beliefs in our lives right Venus retrograde here is I think it's going to ask you to to adjust your mentality and to adjust your ideas, Virgo, of how much responsibility you're taking on in your career life. How much responsibility, not everything goes according to plan. And just because you're doing more and more and more and you're the go-to person doesn't mean that that is an effective use of your value. The value you're paying for your life with is a currency of time. So how are you using that? How are you valuing yourself? If you're speaking and you're doing things in public, um, is this bringing maybe a focus of value um, back onto you in some way, shape, or form. So either way, the Venus retrograde is going to have you look over these areas, including you could have applied for a promotion or a promotion could have maybe been granted, and the Venus retrograde actually brings it back to the table.
So during a Venus retrograde, we highly suggest that you not jump into new projects. You don't buy those big ticket items. My goodness, things are going to be changing for you financially because Venus is also a ruler of your second house in the general. So not making any big financial decisions is good idea here. On the 14th, Jupiter is going to retrograde there in the fifth house. When Jupiter goes retrograde, we have to relook at our strengths and our weaknesses and the wisdom of that. In the fifth house, children, new businesses, conception of ideas, um, risks, passion, romance. Where do you still need help and training and education? Because this is the area with Jupiter retrograde, we say, I don't know everything, right? The wisdom is, I don't know everything, teach me. So in those areas of your life, where do you need to look back and take an honest evaluation of where you've presented yourself as overconfident, but now you're having to go back and go, wait a minute, a little humble pie. I don't actually know what I'm doing here. Please help and guide me. And this is a beautiful place of learning and wisdom expansion, okay? On the 20th, we're going to welcome the sun into the energy of Gemini. And on the 22nd, we're going to welcome in a new moon in Gemini. So both in the career zone, you're motivated. Light, heat, life, and vitality are happening. With the new moon, you want to plant your seeds of intention. What's the new pace of work? What's the new pace of how you're going to show up in the world? What is the new pace of what you have to give and you have to offer to the world? How are you going to be known for these things? The new moon will offer you a fresh start to begin there. And remember, anything is possible. Possible. Maybe you're even rethinking and reimagining work in a way that you hadn't before. You're realizing you could work differently than you ever thought and still be successful. As we end this month, we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Cancer, and this is going to light up your 11th house, which will become strong as we travel through June. But Mercury here in Cancer is saying you need support from friends. You need support from organizations, or maybe you're lending support to organizations, but ultimately you're communicating with a sense of nurturing at a group level. I think this could also be in the 11th house. You are nurturing your long range plans and goals and designs. Um, but whatever's happening here, there's an emotional valence that is also attached to your decision making around 11th house things, um, friends, groupings, organizations, causes, social media, right? Any of those places where you're connecting as an individual but adding to the group level, this is a place where you may be finding your voice and making different decisions. Because so much has also been happening in that 10th house, truly, this could be you communicating support at a group level. You know, so are you able to show up and be really supportive to that, that therapy group or to that breathwork group or to that mothering group? You know, where can you lend your voice with um, nurturing that in, in a very useful way. All right, Virgos, I do think it's going to be a good month. I think there's plenty to be done. It's heavy retrograde, so remember things are slowing down. And next month, we'll head into eclipse time. But before we get there, I hope you will check out the channel, the collaborations. I've decided to call them the Eat and Greets, where I invite um, another astrologer over. We have a snack, we have a drink, and we talk about astrology. And we're not just bringing you topics. We're also going to be bringing you some techniques and some skills that you can apply to your own practice as well if you're beyond... Um, wanting to just learn about the basic signs or just wanting to hear about concepts, we're going to teach you how to do some things as well. So we've had Nadia Shah, we've had Sasha Benedetti over, um, Terrence Gardino is on his way as well. Gemini Brett will be here and um, Maurice Fernandez, Elizabeth Grace, they are lined up and they are excited to come over here to the Cyber House and meet and greet with you. So I hope you will check those out, okay? All right, you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye everyone.